how's it going everybody welcome back to manor lords we are back at it we still have the most amazing coat of arms that anyone is ever gonna have in manor lords and we need a name for the settlement we can change it i'm not even gonna try and pronounce this but do feel free to go down into the comments suggest some names for the settlement let me know what you think it should be called and at some point in the near future, we'll get around to renaming this place based on your feedback. It probably won't be the next episode because the next episode is probably going to get recorded in about an hour. So it'll be at some point. But this is the video I'm going to be coming back to to uh, find out what we're going to be calling this little settlement. So do feel free to let me know. Now, we need to make my people happy. They, well, some of them are probably going to have, actually, no, none of them have fuel. And the reason they don't have fuel is because I don't think we have anyone working at the Woodcutter's Lodge. And we don't have anyone working at the Woodcutter's Lodge because we haven't managed to grow the population all that much. We have room for eight families, which is great. It'd be nice if we could start to uh, just bring those numbers up and actually have something like eight families in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build another few burgage plots. And I think the way we're going to do this is I don't necessarily, I don't, I really don't necessarily want to, um, hmm. I don't think I'm going to get this to line up exactly the way I want it to, which is really unfortunate. Um, we might end up with some pretty nasty looking plots here to be quite honest with you. But, uh, I guess that's okay. Can I, can I tell it not to snap to things? No. That's unfortunate. All right. Well, tell you what. Can I have it snap to that corner? There we go. Have it do that. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. <laughs> oh, man. That's not not a good look. That's not... It is not a good look. I could do this and not have the expansion space at the back. Which I don't think we're going to need, but I would like... I don't know. I'd like this space to not be... Uh, I'd like it to be a bit of a better space, you know? I guess... I guess realistically, this is maybe just what we do. And we just wrote it. Oh, that looks terrible as well. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Let me um let me just use the other side of this road, I think. Is is what we're gonna do. So we'll go to we'll go to this corner. I could fill in this entire space if I wanted to. I don't necessarily want to. And I really man, I don't I don't want I don't want this weird looking space either. That's not as bad, but I think realistically. I think we go to here, and I think we just fill this with a, uh, I think we just do a bit of a grid, really. I think we just do sort of a main road looking thing. So we'll go to about here. We want to go a little teensy, a little bit further. That's, that's pretty good. That's six more plots. We'll go ahead and build those. I don't need them to be priorities. We have got new families moving in already. So let's go to the Woodcutter's Lodge. Let's get someone working in there. We'll speed things up to get these things building out as well, which is going to be great. And hopefully, hopefully this means that in not too long at all, I'm going to be able to have all of my things working. We don't need to worry too much about the farming, like I've said, but I do think getting things like the Forester's Hut up and running will be really important. I do think getting things like the Woodcutter's Lodge up and running will be really important, especially since we are now out of fuel and we're going to need that for the, uh, for the coming winter. Now, we did just build another market stall. We got a uh, little firewood stall down there, which should mean that some of these guys eventually will have a supply of fuel because obviously we did just start getting the woodcutter's lodge going. So that'll be great. That'll keep them nice and uh, nice and happy, which is what we want them to be. We still have some supplies sitting around here. It's just a bunch of stone as well. Can I, can I get you guys to move this? I think I might need to get someone working at the storehouse. So we might be, might be waiting a little while for that. I'm also thinking let's prioritize constructing at least two of these and see if we can start moving a few more people in. The food variety is still great. 54, 55% approval is great. That's still low population growth, but it, it's still growth. Low population growth is still population growth. So that's, uh, that's fine by me. That is, uh, that is completely, completely fine by me. 23, almost two years worth of food supplies. That's amazing news. And then, yeah, we've got this guy making some, uh, some firewood. It was down there very briefly, which should mean, yeah, there we go. 
We've got some uh, some fuel stall supplies for quite a few of these guys. We've got another settler coming in, which is great. So let's let's get you working. We don't need the communal oven. That's that's really not something we need. The saw pit, I do think we need. I think getting some planks going is going to be really good since that's going to let me immediately upgrade the forager hut. And then whoever comes in next is absolutely going to go work in the forestry building because we are going to need... We're going to need some trees. We're absolutely going to need some trees. And I think it takes three years for those to grow. The reason I think that is because one of these, this right here, it's, uh, let's see, until the trees are fully grown. This is for the apple orchards, which takes around three years. The orchards produce only a fraction of the yield. So the sooner we have this forester's hut up and running, I think that means the sooner we're going to have trees nearby for these guys to go and chop down. So I'll tell you what, since there's not too many trees nearby, let's take one guy out of there like I just did. We'll put him in the forester's hut like that, and that will get that thing working that little bit quicker, which is great. And then as the end of this year comes around, I think at that point we get the farmhouse going. The more people we can get into the farmhouse, the better. Obviously going to need someone for the windmill as well. Hopefully a few someones for the windmill. And I think that's kind of going to be my focus for this settlement is um it's it's food production it's going to be making sure that my people are happy and fed and fat so that they don't die <laughs> it's, it's kind of that simple really um oh i don't like that can i can i rotate this around so it doesn't look terrible i really wish i could get the house on the other side i do love the idea of having something in this plot but i just i don't think i don't think it's gonna be a house unfortunately which is I guess that's just the way of it. Now, let's see. We have living space for 14 families, which is great. I do think we still have, we do still have new people coming in. We just got uh, another unassigned worker there. So let me see. The storehouse doesn't, uh, and the granary could have someone as well. We can actually upgrade to a large granary already because I guess we have planks, which is great. The storehouse can be upgraded as well. I'll tell you what, let's immediately upgrade you and immediately upgrade you let's get both of my storage buildings upgraded to be as large as possible as soon as possible so that basically we don't have to worry about things not being put into storage that's our hitching post we can assign people to it and we can actually order another ox for 20 gold which is really tempting actually if i did that if i got another o uh, ox i could have went for the upgrade for the field but at the very least, another ox would be something I could assign to the logging camp. You know what? I think we're going to do that. I, I don't think I've, I've never ordered another ox before. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll just do that and see and see how it goes. So that should give me two livestock. I think I'm going to need to um, I'm going to need to wait, though. Right. So advanced assign. So we have you assigned, which is great. Oh, we do have two of them now fantastic okay i also think i might need to let's move this hitching post to a different spot i'm thinking it could go back here or sort of down here but i think we'll put it back here for now because that can be upgraded we oh wait no apparently it can't okay well oh wait no it needs to be constructed before it can be upgraded that's fine that's totally okay regardless this place should have its own uh ox which will make things a little bit quicker now let's see some resources disappear when it's getting cold and reappear again in the spring. Basically, don't expect to find any berries at the height of winter is, is kind of what that means. So not a big deal. It's no problem. It just is is what it is. And that's that's completely fine. What have we got here? Hitching post is done. Let me upgrade this to a small stable so that we have that extra little bit of capacity. And then these guys are gonna be waiting on some timber coming down here which is completely fine there we go we got the small stable for the uh for the ox which is great and then as soon as these are done i'm assuming all of my stuff is gonna get moved into um well i might need i think i do need to assign someone to storage here so we might be waiting a minute but regardless i think we're doing okay i think we've got we've got 13 months of food which is all right we have a month of fuel which is not all right, but we'll manage. And apparently we got a lot of trees that have just popped up around here. 
Now I'm willing to bet that's kind of what all these little bushes are. Oh wait, no, that's probably what these are. These are, I mean, quite clearly those trees. <laughs> there was, I can swear there was a bunch of bushes around here though. I don't <laughs> No, those bushes just turned into trees, man. I don't know, science, I guess. Yeah, I'm <laughs> regardless, it's really good that this happened because it means that we've got more trees to chop down, right? That's that's what we're looking for. It's a good thing, all right? It's uh <laughs> it's a good thing. Let's uh let's get these built and you know what? Spring is Oy. I mean spring is still a bit of a distance away. We don't we don't really need to get anyone working in the farmhouse right now. But let's see, what else do people need? So they're gonna need a church, which is oh the granary's done. Look at you. Also, I've probably said this before. I'm, I'm almost certain that I've said this before. It might have been in that original run of Manor Lords videos from a year and a half ago. Every time I play a game like this and I say the word granary, I vividly remember. And those of you that have played this game, not Manor Lords, the game I'm talking about, those of you that have played it will know exactly what I'm talking about. You will know exactly what I'm about to say about Stronghold, the original Stronghold. Anytime you would start a new game, you would have your advisor. I can't remember what the first thing he said was. There was like two lines that the advisor would say at the start of every game. One of them was you know, whatever it was. But the second one in a very distinct voice was the whole, Cite your granary, sire. I, I just every time. Every single... I love it. I need to play some more, play more stronghold. I'm not going to lie. I really, really do. Now, we currently have four unassigned... Uh, people I'm gonna put two of them to work in the farmhouse if the field is not set to fallow workers will plow it and sow the crops as soon as possible yield will increase as it grows and is harvested in September during the harvest season we'll also put someone to work in the windmill and at the very least even if we don't have someone working in the communal oven we will end up with a bunch of flour once the harvest goes through and that means that towards the end of this year, we're going to end up with some bread, which is fantastic. Very, very excited about having uh, having some bread. We've also got another food stall that's been built down here. So that should keep uh, people nice and happy. Ten months of food, three months of fuel. We're doing OK. So they want a church. I mentioned that before. Can we build a church? We're going to need planks and we're going to need stone. So let's have a look at mining. We have a stone cutter camp. It's going to need two logs to build. Do we have stone nearby? We do. We have this really, really good deposit right down here. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me get myself... I, don't know, I can run a road straight through this. I don't know if I want to run a road straight through it. My worry is that running a road straight through a deposit might get rid of the deposit, you know? I, I have my doubts that that's the case, but I'm going to build close to it. And that's about as that's about as much as I want to do. And then maybe... We'll sort of build over like this. I really should do some curves. You know, <laughs> you know what? We're gonna do some curves here. Is uh, is what we're gonna do. Let me let me bring up the road curvature a little bit, and let me uh, <laughs> let me just just have some fun here. Cause we the whole game like you can you can do all of this right. You can do all these curves. You can make the roads look great. And I'm just over here playing it like it's city skylines, man. We'll do that, and that looks all right. And then I think what we'll do is we'll get ourselves a stone cutter camp and it can live, I want to say right there on the curve. So like, maybe this, no, I'm going to put it on that side. So right about there for a stone cutter camp. We also have a mining pit, which is used to extract either iron ore from iron deposits and clay from clay deposits. We have obviously clay right there. We have some iron up there. We don't need either of those yet, but we are going to need the stone. So let's make that a high priority. And we'll get that going a little bit sooner than later. And then we do have two people unassigned, so we can get someone working down there pretty much immediately, which is going to be great. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to put someone to work in that storehouse just so someone will go out and pick up this uh, this stone that's been laying around. There we go. That's that's <laughs> that is all I was looking for. That's literally it. A bandit camp was sighted. Where is this? Is that in my territory? No. So that's. That's a bit of a ways away from where I need to, I, need, I don't really need to worry about it, I think. I think, I think we'll be just fine. Uh, not worrying about the, the bandit camp there whatsoever. 
really doesn't seem like uh, like a big deal. And you know, thinking about it, it might uh, another ruler's army was sighted. Hello, where are you guys? Oh, you're all the way up there. That's fine. That's that's totally fine. I'm also gonna choose to not worry too much about that. Uh, having someone working in the storehouse might actually be a good idea. Now that I think about it. Well, we also just got another unassigned worker. We got a new person to the to the the settlement, so we'll get them to work in the stone cutter camp. That'll give us a nice supply of well stone. And I guess, I guess we maybe want to exp I do want to expand the population, but I don't want to overdo it. You know, that's um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. It is coming into spring, so we should see, and we do see these guys. There's actually quite a lot of people working out there. Oh wait, no, it's a, it's a family, isn't it? So it's a family of people that go out and work. At the, so you're assigning, yeah, two families are out there working. I always forget that that's the way it works. It's not, you're not assigning two people, you're assigning their family to uh, to go and work there. So you're gonna have to try and remember that. Generic storage is full. Somehow I don't think it is. I, I think we're doing all right. We have four months of fuel, nine months of food. These guys are doing their thing. This is regrowing. Do we have any planks? I guess we do. We can get the forager hut upgrade, which is going to give us a supply of herbs, which is absolutely fantastic. No upgrades available for the marketplace. That's okay. And then to upgrade these guys, we need to meet all of these requirements. So we do need that church that I was talking about, and we need to provide clothes. Now to provide clothes, we need linen, leather, or yarn. If we go into, I want to say industry, we can get leather. We can turn hides into leather at a tannery, which is maybe not a bad idea because we obviously have this hunter's thing down here. So I think I'm going to go straight for that. I think I'm going to turn off my snap to roads. I'm going to rotate you around and we're going to get you really, really nice and close to, I want to say right there. I want to say right there is kind of kind of perfect for you. So that tannery is going to be great. That is that's going to be everything we could want it to be. And then we have this weird sort of space around it. I'm not too worried about. I don't think there's anything I can necessarily fit around it, which is fine. We have a weaver's workshop. They'll turn wool into yarn, flax into linen. We have a dyer's workshop. They'll convert berries into dyes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build another market. That, uh, that seems like a really good use for this weird little corner that we have here. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of here for it. It is, it is a weird space, but I'm, I'm absolutely kind of here for it. So, you know what? Build that market right around the, uh, the tannery. Let's make the tannery, the tannery a priority. And then sooner or later, we're going to have another stall down here selling leather to my people. And then my people can go ahead and upgrade their houses. Or I can go ahead and upgrade their houses. Which, again, seems like a really good idea. Now, if I wanted wool at this point, I would have to engage in trade, I think. So I'd have to get myself a trading post or a livestock trading post. I would then need to go and build myself a pasture and a sheep farm. But that would be a way to do things. I don't think we're going to go for wool just yet, but I do. I do think getting a trading post is going to be a really good idea. Because what a trading post is going to do is it's going to let me buy weapons and shields and things like that. Although I will be able to make them. We absolutely can make them. That's part of the reason I want to upgrade my houses is because you can turn a house, a level two house, into uh, something like an artisan's shop. Is I, I don't remember exactly how it works, but that's basically what you do is you can say, hey, make weapons or shields or armor or whatever out of the workshop at the back of your house so we'll get a training post for now that'll be a great little addition and can i now build the church do we have we do we have what we need for a church can i build it at the end of this road that's that's gonna be the real question because i do where do i want to put it actually we have got a hill that's sort of sort of up here we have got space out here but i kind of love the idea of building the church right at the end of this road. So let me turn off snap to roads. Let me rotate you around as best I possibly can. And can I get the church just to sit? I want to say right about there. So with the arrow 
firmly on that road right there. And that seems like a good place for it. You know, right at the end of this main street, we've got the church. I'm also pretty sure it has some connection points elsewhere. Yeah, we got like over here, we got this road. And we've got, yeah, we've got one on the side, we've got one on the back. So, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun with this. And let me just bring a road sort of down through the woods. We'll increase the curvature a little bit. We'll see what we can do. Can I maybe bring it down a little bit? Because that curvature is a little, little weird in a few places. Uh, we'll sort of just weave something down through the uh, through the woods, I guess. And this will be a nice little sort of back connection to our our settlement via the church. Which I don't know if that's a good idea, but it's what we're going to do. So we'll connect it to there. And then for this back one, this back one could probably connect up to the uh, the iron deposit at some point. But for now, we'll speed things up. I'm going to make this a priority because that is going to make people very happy. And then the trade post is sort of going to be a secondary thing. I'm not really in any major rush to get that going. And then looking down here, what have we got going on? We are sewing at the moment. Let's make that a top priority, actually. And that'll give us... Ooh... You know, since we didn't plant last year, let's do wheat next year and we'll fallow the year after. So we'll do two on, one off. We'll give the, the soil a little bit of, a little bit of time to, uh, to recover. We have got a tannery. Let's get someone working there. And there's no advanced settings, which is totally fine. But what this should do is it should mean that that need people have for clothing will get fulfilled. The need they have for a church is going to get fulfilled as well. And so they should all end up being really happy and willing to, uh, there we go, clothing stall. So now, eventually, they are, uh, they're going to have that need covered. I'm, I'm, oh man, I feel like I'm making really good progress. I will say, I will say, the progress I'm making is, is partly because, like, like I said, right, we did, I, or I did, sort of a, I did two hours, you know, I, I played this for a couple of hours and uh, I've sort of done all this already. So I'm, I'm making steady progress because I did this already. <laughs> Once we get to sort of a stage that I haven't uh, haven't already played, maybe things will fall apart a little bit. We'll find out. But for now, I am feeling pretty good about this. And yeah, we just need that. Uh, we just need that church. It needs quite a few more planks, quite a bit more stone. We'll absolutely get there. We do also have a new family, so I'll tell you what. Let me get someone working in the... Let me get someone working in the granary. And then the next person to come in is going to be working in the communal oven. And then we could probably do something for the stable as well. But you know what? It's it's totally fine. Let's, uh, let's see how this is going. So now it is growing, which is great. I don't know what farmers do in this game when they're not working. I don't know if it's like like banished where when they're not working they just sort of go and do anything else i really have no idea but again i i guess we'll find out i'm also noticing that my food supplies are not anywhere near as as good as they used to be now that's probably because the population is now 42 we've sort of we've sort of doubled the population a little bit in the last while so i think once we get this up and going that'll be okay we'll figure that out I think getting the woodcutter's lodge going a little bit better will help that fuel situation. And then getting more people into the logging camp. I mean, we have 28 timber sitting up here. So we'll be fine. It's it's just, I think it's just gonna be a case of being patient and, uh, and not worrying too much about different things. Generic storage is full. Interesting. I It keeps saying that generic storage is full, but I, I don't think it is. I just, I've, I've really got no idea why it keeps telling me that that's the case, but you know what? Still, there it is again. It's fine. Uh, work area is empty. Workers can't find anything to gather within their work area. Is it you? It is you. So why are you complaining? You have an unlimited work area. Let me just say, like, go there, right? I, have these guys just not been doing anything for the past while? That might be the case. That genuinely, that genuinely might be the case. They've just not been doing anything for a while because they had no berries. They were like looking around here and the berries are just over there. It's like trying to find diamonds in Minecraft, right? You mine just sort of straight down here. The diamonds are just like two blocks to the right or something. That's a reference, right? People still like Minecraft. I, I haven't played Minecraft in years. 
I don't think I've really properly played Minecraft since I tried a series on it on the channel years ago and it flopped horrendously, <laughs> but I played a lot of it when it first came up. I, I remember playing Minecraft 14 years ago. That was, oh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> makes me feel really, really old. Oh man, I don't like that. I, <laughs> I do not like that feeling, but that's all right. This thing is very close to being done, which is great. Let me see here. So living space, we have room for 14 families. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we do have 14. We have one unassigned. We have 13 assigned. So if we want more people, we are going to have to build ourselves more plots, which is good. H is a hot key to, uh, to do that. So... Do I want to build a bunch more plots down this main road? That's the question. Um, I think I do. I think I think we can get away with a few uh, with a few plots here. I do this. That's terrible. Uh, I think we'll just do this, and that'll give us what is that? A nice, a nice five more plots. That seems that seems pretty solid. We'll go ahead and do that. I think I could get one in here. I'm pretty sure I could do. Like, what would what would what would this do? Oh, that's room for two. Okay. Do I want to do that? I could fill that space with something else, but I, I think I'm just going to do two little burgage plots down there. They don't really have room to upgrade, but that's okay. The church is done, which is great, but I'm not going to get anybody working there until we have more people coming in here. We also do need to be concerned about the food situation, but this is going really nicely. 31% growth. I could burn the field. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I could. I could fence it up as well. Development branch missing. Fertilization. Allow... What did that say? Allows to use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. That's actually a really cool... Really, really cool feature. I might have to look into that once we start upgrading the, the town a little bit further. But I think for now, let me just prioritize constructing, you know, two of these. Just so we can hopefully get more people in here that little bit sooner. We are at 77% approval, which is great. So I'm very happy about that. That's the food variety, clothing, market supply, church level. Market food variety at one point was plus 13. That is wild. That's good. It's, it's, it's wild. It's, it is also very good. I'm very happy about that. And now I think it is just the, I think it's just the old waiting game. I think we just, we just kind of sit around and wait for someone to show up. Or we get the construction done, and then we just assign this guy to do whatever. Because that's the other option, right? I mean, people will show up eventually, so... Yeah, there we go. We got another person. That's great. All right, let's put you to work at the trading post. Let me slow things down a little bit. We'll not pause it, but we will slow it down a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to set up some trade. Now, we currently have 400 stone, which is... um. Not bad, honestly. I don't want to sell it though, because it's a it's a it's a limited resource. We can't renew it. We have 98 planks. So I'm gonna set planks to be exported. And I'm gonna say that at any one time I want 50 of them. So as people come by, we can sell those planks. They're worth two gold each, which is admittedly yeah, it's not that great. But that's okay. It's gonna get me enough to to be a start. We could look at other things as well. We have foods, we have commodities, we have military. We have 20 spears, we have 20 large shields, but I'm going to need those in a little bit. And then livestock as well. We need the livestock trading post to uh, to do anything else. But basically, once we get some money, we can establish a trade route for planks. After paying to establish a trade route, a dedicated traveling merchant will regularly visit your region to trade only this specific type of good. So long story short, you know, things will things will work out. It's just that, uh, yeah, we we need someone to come by, and then when they do come by, wait, what is this complaining about? Work area is empty, really? Oh, it is. All right, well, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 fine. Once they do come by, we'll see the regional wealth up here be increased a little bit, and that's kind of where that one perk comes in to uh, establish a new trade route. Always costs a maximum of twenty five regional wealth. The reason that's good is that some of these trade routes can cost 46. So 
if we can cap the regional wealth, we can essentially turn around and say, hey, you know, uh, the trade routes are only ever going to be a maximum 25, which is which is good. Now, let's see here. We have room for 17 families. We currently have 15. Let me let me let me slow things down. Let me assign the one unassigned worker that we have to the church. And we will probably get a complaint at some point here saying that, yeah, unassigned families needed for construction work. That's OK. We there we go. We have a new family. So that problem has been solved. The reason I wanted to assign this person to the church. Oh, if we get roof tiles, we can upgrade this. Hmm. OK. Well, the reason I wanted to do that is because now with all of these requirements covered, we can start to upgrade to level two, which I absolutely want to do. So we currently have 23 timber. Let me upgrade you. Let me upgrade you. Let me upgrade. I don't know if I want to upgrade all of them. I think. You know what? We'll do. Uh, <laughs> we'll be careful. We can have these guys generate one regional wealth per family per month, though. So that's going to be really good. We'll upgrade just the two of them, though. So just the two of them, just to be safe, just to make sure I'm not overdoing it and not overextending myself. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But these are the kind of upgrades that are going to be really, really good. And once they do get upgraded, we can take a look and see exactly what those are all about. But essentially, it's uh, it's very similar to this. Well, it is this system, actually. Basically, with a level one burgage plot, if I have the money, I can set up a vegetable garden, which will let them grow vegetables. And that's going to be something that leads to them basically having some extra food. And that's actually really good for us. We can do a chicken coop for 25 gold. It will give us a passive yield of eggs. 25 gold for a goat uh, shed, which is hides, or 50 for an apple orchard, plus that one development thing. And that will give us apples. As we upgrade this, we can get a bakery extension, which will actually have twice the efficiency of the communal oven. That is, that is huge. <laughs> I hadn't read that one. Uh, we do need the development branch bakeries though, but basically we can just do all this stuff. And that's what I want to do. The other reason I'm sort of limiting myself to only two of the level two plots is because I believe that's all I need to level up. Yeah. So if I can get two level two plots, we could hopefully at some point get ourselves uh, over to, to bakeries. I'm not 100% sure where the bakeries upgrade is. I guess it's this one. So I would need two development points to get there, but that's okay. Rye cultivation. Interesting. It can be processed into flour, but it's more resilient and can be grown in places with lower fertility. That would be huge. Irrigation as well. Oh, I might have to go into into this path, into farming quite a bit. That might be really good. It would be nice to lock my trade routes, but I think farming is going to be the way to go. We also didn't do anything with beekeeping. We should do that. But yeah, I think we'll go for the orchardry so that we can get some apples coming in. It'll be another source of food and that'll be great. And I guess speaking of sources of food, we should get ourselves the apiary. We didn't get it because we needed the, the planks for it. So how, what does this say? Uh, workers collect honey. Every region can sustain up to two apiaries by default. Placing more will not increase the yields. Okay. I don't think this needs to be next to anything. So I can kind of put it anywhere. I'm going to put it by my farms, I think. Since that kind of seems like the best place for it. So I'm going to say it is a bit of a distance from the ground. Well, it's not that far from the granary. We'll do an apiary there. And, you know, I do kind of want to do another one. So let's do another one sort of. Let's do one behind the church. That seems kind of like the way to go. So we'll bring a little road sort of straight out here. And then we'll just sort of continue this thing in. We'll go for a relatively straight line to there. Eventually, we'll have something in this on this plot, which is fine. But for now, apiary. Let's do it right at the back of the church right there. That'll be great. And you know what? Let's actually just go ahead and get ourselves this mining pit so that we can get ourselves this uh, this iron eventually. Not really any rush to get it, but we'll get the mining pit right there. And we'll also get this one down here so that we can uh, we can get this all connected and uh, and mined out sooner than later. So we'll speed things up. I think what I will do is make the apiary a bit of a priority and we'll do the same with this one down here. 
so that they do get built nice and quickly. And we should, hopefully, once this thing's done, see ourselves getting a really nice little house down here is that I'm very, very excited about. Because like I said, we have different upgrades that could go at the back of it. And that's also potentially going to give us better production. It's just, it's just good. And look at this. Look at this guy. That's, it's a good looking house. I do really like the thatch. I'm not going to lie. I do love a thatch house, but this one's, this one's pretty good too. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Now, let's see. What are they complaining about here? 13 months of food, two months of fuel. That's okay. So we have all these new upgrades, basically. We also have money. We have a good bit of regional wealth. I'm guessing we sold some planks. So if we get a blacksmith's workshop at the back of this, we can make tools, spears, and sidearms. If we get a cobbler's workshop, we can get the production of shoes. We can get war bows. We can get wooden parts and shields. We can make ale. We can also make clothes, cloaks, and gambesons, which is interesting. Very tempted by that. What do you need to level up again? So you would need a tavern. You would need at least a small stone church. You would need a variety of clothing and another source of food. So we, the, the food thing is getting sorted. Shoes or cloaks would help here. So if I went to upgrade you with this or this, Either of those would be good. Now, I'm going to say that cloaks might be a way to go. Now, admittedly, I am going to also need a blacksmith's workshop because a region's being claimed by... Oh, God. That's fine. We will need a blacksmith's workshop because we're going to need to make spears or sidearms. And we are going to need a joiner's workshop to make shields. But I think for now, let's do the tailor's workshop. And we'll get that going. And then I'm going to upgrade one more of these. Because like I said, we are going to need the blacksmith and we are going to need the joiner. So we'll get the tailor, the blacksmith, and the joiner. And then we should be good. This is coming along really nicely as well. Let's prioritize uh, you as well. Production focus. Artisan workshops can sometimes produce multiple types of goods. To select what good is being produced, check the general tab in the building panel. Okay. Okay. So general, you are, what are we doing? So we would need linen and dye to make clothes. We would need linen to make gambesons and we need yarn and dye to make cloaks. So we can't make any of those right now. Yarn is made from wool, which comes from sheep. And then dye is made from berries. Oh man. So I, <laughs> I can't do any of those. That's, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, if we look at our industry, oh man, that's, that is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I don't remember what category I'm looking for here. It's not residential. It's, it's one of these would have what I'm looking for. We're basically looking for something to, uh, we're looking for a weaver is, is what we're, this guy uses wool to make yarn. And then it's industry, which is, uh, this category convert berries into dye. So we need both of those. I guess, I guess I can get this guy. I guess we could start to import. We we could potentially start to import some, uh, some berries. That, that might be really good for uh, production, like con just construction stuff. That might be what we want to do. I think the Dyer's Workshop, I'm going to rotate it around. Try and get it nicely parallel with these guys. And I want to say, I want to say right here is, is kind of what I'm thinking for this thing. So it can live right about there. We'll get ourselves a road to come off of here. Something a bit like, uh, something a bit like that should be fine. And also, are you doing anything right now? No, it has just gone September. And this is, yep, there's some storage. We did get some wheat, which is good. You've got a little bit of wheat in storage as well. So this should start producing, should start producing flour, which is great, which should mean that the communal oven, if we go ahead and assign someone to that, should start working as well. Now, we did get the dyes, the dyer's workshop. Let's get the weaver as well. We'll put the weaver sort of on the other side, I guess. And we have just increased our level because we got another, 
another upgraded house down here. Let's, um, let's figure out what I want to do. I'm going to put this guy here and that'll be fine. It looks like it has a little bit of back, uh, it's got like a back path to it. That's okay. Let's see. Can I afford to do anything here? I think I can. Let me do, let me do a blacksmith for you. And then when this one's upgraded, we can do the joiners workshop in there and everything should be good. So that's good. I'm happy about this. Let's, hmm. So sheep breeding would be really good because it means that I can get two sheep and they'll, you know, breed. But I do, I do want the rye cultivation, I think. I think we had a, I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let me have a look here. What is the rye fertility? Yeah, rye fertility is really good over here. So if I can get rye cultivation, that's going to mean that I can turn that entire space into just farmland for, for rye. So I think that's what we're going to do. We'll go for the orchardry. To level up again, we need... Actually, if we get three more level two burgage plots, we will level up again. I think we're going to do that. I think... I think... So... That's... We, we only need to upgrade two of them because we already have one in progress. So we have... We have three right now. Yeah, we just need to upgrade those two. Okay, that that works for me. Uh, so you, general, what are we doing right now? Spears. We'll do spears. You need iron slabs and planks. That's okay. You are going to be doing a joiner's workshop. And then you're going to be making... Uh, I don't know what you're going to be making, actually. I've also realized that because I'm setting up these specialized things, it leaves us in a bit of a situation where... Uh, Oh man, I might be overextending here. <laughs> I might, I might be overextending. We're okay on food, but we, we might want to look into a woodcutter's lodge expansion here. These trees are doing really nicely up here, but man, we, I, I need to be careful. I need to make sure I'm not overextending. We do still have room for a few more people. We have um, living space for 19 right now with plus two. So what is the, the plus two? I'm guessing is like plus two on the way. So we might actually have to unassign some workers is what I'm thinking. Cause I don't think, I don't know if anyone's gonna move in while I, while I'm building it. Is someone gonna move in and build their own house? I don't, I don't know that they are. Interesting. We did just complete that construction though. So someone was working on that. I wonder if it's my farmers. It might be. Maybe the farmers are doing stuff. It's kind of hard to know. Yeah, this is getting worked on as well. So I genuinely have no idea what's uh, what's going on. I don't know if that is actually something we're we're seeing, but you know what? Let me. Um, what are you guys doing out there? Are you guys sewing again? You are. Okay, that's wait. No, you. They might be. Hmm. I don't know what they're doing. I don't think next next year is not a growing year anyway, so I've got I've got no idea. Absolutely no idea what's going on there. But you know what? Let me go ahead and say we're probably fine on play. Yeah, we got 24 planks right now. We have 647 stone. Let me just unassign you. You guys can go and do anything else right now. Because we really don't <laughs> really don't need all that stone at the minute. It's it's so excessive. And we'll get this upgraded as well. So I I want to say rye cultivation is the way to go. I really do. I think rye cultivation is definitely the way to go. We can do fertilization at some point as well. We can do the bakeries, but I think rye is is definitely the shout. Definitely definitely the shout for this. So Yeah, look at this. Hold on a minute. So rye is 37%. I'm hoping I'm hoping that a, that a fallowed year is going to mean that that percentage goes way up. I would assume that it will, right? I, I assume that's kind of how that works. So we'll sort of leave it for now and we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, what is this complaining about? Not enough supplies. Food is fine. Fuel is not. We've got two unassigned workers. That's okay. We don't need people working stone. We do need people working at the woodcutter's lodge. That is... That is a simple fact. We absolutely need people working at the Woodcutter's Lodge. And I might get someone else working at the Forester's Hut as well. I think this thing is just planting trees around itself, though. 
so I'm almost tempted to say that building another forester down here might be a really good idea. So just building a forester. I don't want to say there, though. Well, maybe I do. I think here is going to be better because we'll get a nice sort of ring of trees around this entire thing. I think that's the way to go. We'll make this a priority. And then hopefully that means that the woodcutter's lodge will have a whole bunch of trees around it to start chopping down to turn into fuel. But I think... I think that's going to be something for next time. We got ourselves a church. We got ourselves some bread, I think. Uh, we're doing all right. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of berries. We have no bread. We have no honey. We have no meat. Well, we have a little bit of meat. We have no vegetables. We're not doing as well as I thought we were doing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. We're <laughs> definitely, definitely could be doing better. But, you know, it's all right. Let's, um, let's get someone working there. And I'll tell you what, I could upgrade this. Uh, wait, what do we need to upgrade again? I need level three plots. Ooh. We're going to wait is what we're going to do. And instead, I'm going to get some vegetable gardens. Because I feel like I remember in my first run through of this game, vegetable gardens were actually really good. That might have changed, but I think just a row of houses here with vegetable gardens is potentially going to be really, really good for us. I think that that seems like a great idea. And then I think just up here, we have still got a little bit of money. I don't think I can afford anything other than chicken. Well, I can't. No, I can't afford anything. You know what? We're fine. It's it's totally fine. Let me double check the trading post. We are aiming to have 50 surplus. So that's fine. Still exporting these. That's OK. We could afford to set up a dedicated trade route. I think actually we are going to do that because that seems like a solid plan. And I think that is going to be my cue to wrap things up for today. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. I'm very excited to see what we can do here with this little settlement. I think we've got a nice little, nice little thing going here. But like I said, that's going to do us for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.